I'm Scott Aldenmiller. It's the 16th of December 2022 and this is my vlog of daily life as a traveler based in Central America and today is our final day of our three days of crazy travel to get from Leon, Nicaragua all the way up to Geneseo, New York where I am filming now here at the hammocks and uh, this morning. So on the 14th, we did our drive. If you follow the show, you know, we drove down from Leon to Liberia, Costa Rica. And then yesterday we did the day of uh, our morning in Costa Rica and then our flight to Houston, Texas. And we got up this morning at 2 a.m in Houston, uh, that was, we were tired. Let me tell you, we were ex absolutely exhausted yesterday. The last two days are already, it takes a lot out of you. They're really good travel days. So I, I can't complain, nothing, nothing went wrong whatsoever. It was absolutely perfect travel, but it's still exhausting to spend a couple days on the road. You're not in your own home. You're not doing your own things. It's just, there's a lot. And then this morning, getting up at two o'clock in the morning, we did go to bed at a fair time last night. So we got three or four hours of sleep. Most of us uh, all camped out in Garrett's room in one space and the alarm went off. We're like, all right, everyone just bathroom change, get out the door. So our goal is to get out the door at three o'clock, which we did. Dominica's parents drove us to the airport. It's Houston Hobby, which is really close. We went so early, there's no like rush hour traffic or anything like that. So nice, easy drive into the airport. We didn't get any food or anything on the way. That's not worth dealing with. Uh, got to the airport um, at a pretty good time. We're at, there were a number of people. Actually, there's always that thought we're going to get in there before there's anybody there. It's not actually true. There were a fair number of people in the lines uh, for Southwest. It is a hub. It's not the main hub. That's Love Field in Dallas, but it's a pretty big secondary hub for Southwest. And uh, we were able to do the electronic check-in and do the bag drop. It's all fast and easy, no problems at all. Went through security, again, no problems, very quickly through security, and then we had lots of time to wait. Now, we were only uh, two hours before our flight, not three, this is a domestic flight, so we don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, we did grab just real quick little bits of breakfast and coffee while we were there, um, and uh, it really didn't have to wait that long. Our flight is going through Midway in Chicago, and the entire flight is just over five hours from Houston all the way to Buffalo, with the layover in Midway. Now, Dominica is very much on edge because there's so much to go wrong on today's flight. So we're very nervous about uh, having something push off and, and having an issue. So our flight coming out of Houston this morning did have to, uh, I believe they actually had to de-ice. It was actually cold enough that they had to treat the plane. We had just the tiniest bit of delay. We had one crew member that, um, uh, it was probably Chicago that had to de-ice, but I remember it as being Houston. Um, they had one crew member that didn't show up, so we had to wait for a replacement to come. But that only made us like 10 minutes late, and they were able to make up the time. No big deal. Uh, we got into Chicago Midway. Very easy. Uh, just had to go right around the corner um, to get to our next flight. So that was that was nothing at all. Waited there. Uh, actually had enough time to sit and be a little bit bored at Midway. And then we got our flight on to Buffalo. So the first leg was just about two hours and five minutes or something like that. And then the second leg was like an hour and 20 minutes. It was so fast. We got into Buffalo and it was clear. We've been hearing about all these blizzards and all these problems with the weather in the United States in this region. It was clear and warm enough to be green as we came into Buffalo. Just barely warm enough to be green. Really cold. But, and obviously the snow has come now. Um, but it was it was perfect and silky smooth landings um nothing went wrong got off got our luggage no issues there and we're able to rent a car we rented from dollar uh got a really good deal actually and we just went for the cheapest thing which is you know to toyota corolla or similar and ended up getting a nissan rogue which is my favorite rental car because it's spacious and easy to drive comfortable comfortable um so i was really happy about that this is my first time driving since we were back in the states in May, so not a year, but it's it's been a while, and I only drove the tiniest bit then, um, maybe maybe an hour tops. So I really go a long time without driving. We got in the car in Buffalo and drove uh, to my dad's. We stopped in Batavia, of course, at the Tim Hortons, right? So you get off the New York Thruway and grab some donuts and stuff there to take with us. So we had coffee in the car and donuts to bring to dad's and, and bagels and that. So we, because we really didn't eat much today and everyone, especially Luchana and Dominica, have really been looking forward to getting bagels in New York. Because that's something that's, we, we can get them in Nicaragua, but they're really hard to find. And it's just a friend of ours on the beach makes them that are any good. Uh, and that's not very often. So it's, it's, it's hard. 
uh, to get them really. You can get like frozen lenders and stuff, but like that's not the same. Uh, so we got that at Tim Hortons, ate that in the car, brought donuts to dad's and had uh, and actually got in uh, in the early afternoon. Sorry, I'm holding this with my hand. The GoPro is just in my hand. It's really hard to do, especially with how cold it is. Um, and I'm trying to keep it kind of like, I don't like the background, but this is how I get the light. Uh, so it's a little bit of a struggle, but I don't want to go out and record because it's so cold. Uh, and then I'm just out in the wind. So I'm hoping that this works works okay. Sorry for the background. Um, it's so much better if I turn around and do this, but then I just totally disappear. But then you can see this beautiful, well, I can do this. I can show you around a little bit while I'm talking here in Geneseo. And that is uh, the road heading up to Avon right there uh, with the traffic on it, if you can see that, just in case you're looking. We're, we're at the backside of the hammocks on the north, uh, I want to say the northeast side of town. I'm not looking at a map. Makes it a little bit tough. So, um, uh, so we, we got here and we were able to hang out for a while. Um, big things that were waiting for me when we got here, my new GoPro 11, the one that I'm recording on. That's why I've not been able to do updates while we were traveling. I didn't have my GoPro with me. So really excited to be using this. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And my new laptop, my MacBook Air M2, had arrived. And both of, the, both of those things were waiting for me. And of course, I had to get them set up right away because I am behind on making the show for you guys. And I need to re record it with the camera and edit it with the laptop. And I have not really been able to work for the last several days. Uh, this is the longest stretch I've ever gone without having access to my computer in probably 20 years. Uh, so <clears throat> a little bit, little bit stressful there, but it worked out really well uh, and I got everything set up. So in just a little bit, I'm gonna show you the laptop because I, I do wanna show a little bit of, of what and why uh, and talk about that. Um, but real quick, the GoPro 11, I got it set up and so far I am loving working with this GoPro 11 over the 9. For those who follow me, one of the things you know, obviously my 9 is old and it's crashing all the time. I use it a ridiculous amount. So it goes through um, a lot of wear and tear. Uh, but also this has the new GoPro processor, uh, the GP2 instead of the GP1. And the amount of extra horsepower in that is significant. This thing starts up so quickly and it doesn't do the turning itself on and off thing that the, the, the GoPro 9 does. Even when I plug it into charge, it doesn't just turn itself on. It doesn't turn itself on when I unplug it from charging. It doesn't turn itself on when I put in a battery. Uh, it, the GoPro 9 would randomly just sit on my desk with nothing touching it, not plugged into anything, and it would just turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off all the time. And this does not do that. Um, but when I do turn it on, the buttons are nice and responsive and it turns on instantly. And uh, that means it's so much easier to, to get things and not miss them. And it just, I spend a lot less time um, noticeably already dealing with stuff. Uh, it uh, naturally um, has, a, has a larger sensor than the GoPro 9. Um, it, ha it can handle some different formats and it's kind of designed around recording in different um, um, quality. So the GoPro 9 was really focused on, it could record higher than 4K, but it was really designed around 4K recording and 8-bit color. And the GoPro 11 is really focused on 5.3K, uh, which is an odd size, but it gives us quite a bit extra to work with and I'm told that the image looks better when you take that and scale it down to 4K in the final edit. Plus it allows us to do a little bit of zoom in without ever losing 4K native or higher, which is really nice. Uh, and it's supposedly just the tiniest bit better in low light. Um, it's got new stabilization options. It's got new wide angle options. There's a lot of things that we will play with, um, but really big things include the uh, incredible, much faster, uh, uh, buttons and the power on and off, um, the recording happens faster. Um, big things for workflow for me, uh, with the GoPro 9, when you hook it up, it will upload automatically to GoPro, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't manage the, uh, the files on the camera. This one will automatically delete them when it knows it's got them up in the cloud. That's going to save me a lot a lot of work on the camera. That's gonna make my life much easier. Um, the 10-bit color is gonna make things just look just a little bit nicer. Uh, and I have no problem recording, like I, with the new, um, with, because I work with Max, the M1 and the M2, it has so much horsepower, has no problem dealing with the extra bit rate on that. Um, those, are, those are kind of the killer features, plus the lens. I keep talking about the lens. When it's snowing or raining, I can take this out and it just shears right off the lens. It doesn't stick. I don't have to worry about cleaning it. I don't have to worry about like blurry images very much. It really gives me a lot more um, freedom to shoot in different weather and stuff. So I'm excited about that. 
That was really our big day. I am going to show the, the Mac in just a little bit. For dinner, we got uh, University Hots. It's one of the meals that we look forward to. That and pizza and subs. Those are kind of the big things that we look to get when we get uh, to New York. So we got garbage plates for dinner tonight and kind of kicked off our food here in New York. Uh, and that was delicious, of course. And everybody got it. Everybody liked it. Um, and we did delivery. We've never done that before here at Dad's. Uh, and uh, so that was, that was pretty much our day. And then, obviously, we were tired, so we didn't stay up too late. I'm going to take you inside, show the Mac just a little bit uh, before wrapping up today's episode. I am trying to keep them a little bit shorter. A lot of people have mentioned that they get pretty long and it's so cold. It is hard to do any length. So we're going to do that and uh, that will wrap up our day. We are safely here in New York. We're going to be filming in New York for the rest of the week. So let's go inside. All right. So the other thing I was going to tell you about is my new Mac book Air M2. So this is the very latest of the MacBook Airs, which are their super portable, very light line for those who don't know. And it's a 13 inch laptop, very small, uh, but it's the um, second generation of the Apple M processor, which I've been using for the last two years, the M1 in my desktop. And it has been fantastic. It uses very little power, generates very little heat, and it is just screaming fast. It has been an amazing experience. As someone who doesn't generally like Mac, I'm so happy with that. And Final Cut Pro has been fantastic. That's how I've been making the show. And so with um, all the traveling we're doing and things that we expect to be doing and the show taking off, having the ability uh, to be mobile and to do the show while traveling um, is pretty important. And my original laptop that I've had for years uh, was not uh, chosen with the intent of it being portable. It was really meant to be kind of a stationary workstation because I didn't travel very much. Circumstances have changed pretty significantly in the last few years. Um, everything I have is a couple years old, so it's not like we're replacing new things. And, uh, and we have lots of use cases for the other ones. Luchana needs my old laptop. It is absolutely perfect for her. So instead of getting her a new one, it was decided that I needed to get one that met my needs so that the one that met her needs could go to her and so forth without being redundant and having something that didn't really fit perfectly. Uh, so the MacBook Air is incredibly small. It's a 13 inch uh, machined aluminum. So it's very thin, it's very light, it's very rugged, uh, and it has an extreme amount of power. Uh, it's, it's a good 20% more processor power, 50% more uh, memory bandwidth, and my desktop is only a quarter terabyte of storage, which is not a big deal. It's a desktop, I plug in external SSDs, but for the laptop, I need some working space, and the smallest it comes with is a half terabyte, and that's what I was gonna try to get away with, but when um, I went to order it, I was not able to get uh, prompt shipping on that model uh, to have all the features that I needed. I had to go up to one terabyte to get it to ship immediately, and it did, it shipped. Um, if, I, if I had gone with the regular one, it wasn't gonna arrive till December 28th, which was not going to work. And this one was able to arrive yesterday, and I was able to order it earlier this week, and they shipped it the same day, and it only took one day to get to my dad's. So this really was a lifesaver. I had to go up to the one terabyte NVMe drive to do it. And while I don't really need it, ah, I'm really glad I have it already, just knowing that I have, uh, it's four times the total space of my desktop, and considering how much the operating system stuff used, it's like six to seven times the usable space of my desktop, which is really nice for all the video editing, especially on the go. So for this entire trip, I'm gonna be editing live, or Liesl's gonna be editing live using my new laptop, which I'm gonna show here. And uh, you can see Final Cut Pro open there. And it's very small, it's so tiny um, and really attractive. I got the Midnight, uh, which is a very, very, very dark blue. It gives a black appearance, but it's actually uh, blue. And I think, and, and already I got it set up, I got it set up tonight uh, as soon as I got here and it's already a fantastic experience. I'm really liking the feel, the size, uh, the 4K screen. I haven't had that so I can actually do editing and testing in 4K and the M2 processor and the faster NVMe, um, all that, it's really noticeable when editing because the new GoPro is pulling 5.3K 10-bit instead of 4K 8-bit. So there's a lot more bandwidth, a lot more processing going on to edit the videos. It's as smooth as silk. It's noticeably faster than the M1 desktop. Uh, and so uh, that was part of what I needed, right? I'm doing so much editing that that extra oomph matters and you feel it in this laptop. This is 
nice. I'm really, really happy with this. So it was a tough decision to buy uh, a Mac. It's obviously a lot more expensive than getting the Linux laptops that I normally get, but with all the stuff going on with the show and the other shows that I do, and there's just so much editing and needing to be able to travel and do stuff on the go and to be more portable, this just made sense and it's fantastic, I have to say. And that's coming from, I'm a hardcore AMD Ryzen uh, Ubuntu Linux user under normal circumstances. I still prefer Ubuntu Linux over Mac OS significantly, but this this really does a good job of integration. And I have a, a, an iPhone so that integrates well. Like it, it plays into my ecosystem now pretty well. Um, and I kind of, it feels really weird being a Mac guy after so long, but this specific hardware and everything is just, it, it's just gonna do such a good job for making the show. So I just wanted to share that. This is, this really is something that's really cool. Um, it's going to make everything, and I'm going to be using this for editing even when I'm not mobile, uh, when I'm in the office. This is going to integrate with my desktop and allow me to edit and, and do uh, more things at once and faster rendering, and it allows both machines to render at once for the same job, and so it allows for a lot more work to get done in less time. And with Liesl helping me with editing, that's a really big deal because this means that I can be doing work on my desktop and she can be doing editing at the same time without stepping on each other's toes, and it'll use both processors to do rendering super fast. That's what's gonna matter uh, quite a bit in the long run, so I'm excited about that. All right, one last thing before we wrap up for the day. The other thing that we did this evening is after we got uh, to the house, uh, or after we, we did dinner and everything, and, and we were kind of winding down, ooh, the wind is picking up out here, and I'm in socks. This is why? Um, the girls uh, opened their Christmas present from gram Grandpa, and uh, in spirit of my mother, who is no longer with us, but uh, who was always very, very impatient about Christmas presents and always wanted to see things opened very early, so this is quite a bit before Christmas, uh, but it makes sense that they went ahead and did their Christmas present early. Uh, some of you may know that we had a um, video game desktop that we use when we have a game room. So it's not portable. It's the so we set up a room and we have a system for playing games and that system died. Uh, we don't know what's wrong with it. I'm hoping that we can fix it still. It's not that old. It's like three years old, maybe four years old. It was very well built at the time. We paid a lot of taxes to bring it into the country and uh, our hope is that um, we can get it working again because it really really has a lot going for it, but we have to assume that we can't, and we have to move to, when we bought it, we didn't know we'd have to take things into and out of Nicaragua, and large, bulky desktops don't go over well, small things do, and so the new video game machine that they have is this little B-Link, which is really cool. It is absolutely tiny, a uh, little AMD unit, and it has more CPU power than their current uh, couple year old machine, I'm gonna set it down, uh, but it has less GPU power. We're hoping that it will have no problem running a lot of their games, uh, but we already tested it out with some, and it seems like it's working really well, uh, and this seems like a format that's gonna work going forward, uh, because we're gonna need something that's gonna work for the years to come as a plan. Like when this uh, becomes old, how do we replace it? Something small like this. Um, if we get into that pattern, we'll keep upgrading and we won't notice if it does have uh, some limitations, they won't really be a big deal. So that is, uh, that is a really big deal for them. Um, video games are a huge thing for them, both portable ones like the Nintendo Switch, so they can uh, move around and play in different places, uh, having uh, multiple machines so they can play together, having computers so they can work on video games because that is what they want to do for careers. Um, they're, they're very much into video games. It's something that they um, watch shows about, want to make shows about. Um, we'll be able to get back to doing our show, Loaf Gaming, uh, Luchana keeps saying how much she wants to get back to that now that we've been away from it for a little while, and, and I want to get back to it too, and this will allow for that, and uh, so, so we're very excited about this. This is a really cool present from Grandpa, um, and it's going to allow us, because we have in the house a new video game room that is to be dedicated specifically for having a space to play video games, so we're uh, really looking forward to being able to set that up again um, and get playing, and then hopefully getting the other machine fixed too and giving us a lot more options, but we have to assume that that one has died. Uh, it does not even turn on anymore, which is really sad. And so uh, so this is their big Christmas present here. They opened that tonight. Um, and then pretty much it was time to go off to bed. We did fire it up and, and update it and stuff, so we know it's, it's working and everything, uh, but we didn't play any games or anything like that. So that is it for the 16th. We are here in New York. We're gonna be here for several days, um, not quite a week. 
And uh, remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, you can buy me a coffee. That coffee doesn't just help pay for the show. It helps keep me warm in this cold weather. Think about how cold I am holding this camera to get this out for you guys. I need that coffee. <laughs> And uh, if you could share on social media, tell your friends about the show. Um, and if you want to support the show by watching another episode, that really does help. Other than that, all right, from cold New York, I will see all of you tomorrow.